Hello, and thanks for tuning in to the NASA SpaceX Crew-5 mission, a long-duration rotational mission to the International Space Station. I'm Kate Tice, Quality Systems Engineering Manager here at SpaceX, and I'm joined by NASA's Sandra Jones. Now, we're just a few hours away from the final approach of docking to Dragon to the International Space Station. The crew is awake and ready to monitor the final steps, so let's recap the mission thus far. Yesterday, launch day preparations started early for our crew members. About four hours prior to launch, the crew completed their final medical checks before joining the SpaceX team to get into their spacesuits. After suit up in the NASA operations and checkout building, the crew walked out, waving some final farewells to their family and friends who were waiting outside. The next destination for the crew was, of course, the launch pad. It was about a 20-minute Tesla ride to pad 39A, where the Falcon 9 and Crew Dragon spacecraft were waiting for them. Two and a half hours prior to launch, the crew ingressed or entered the Crew Dragon spacecraft, walking over that crew access arm, getting a last look out of those windows at Florida's Space Coast, and heading into the White Room and the vehicle. 40 minutes prior to launch, that crew access arm retracted, and at T minus 35 minutes before it liftoff, the launch escape system was armed, allowing the crew to escape the Falcon 9 on the launch pad or upon ascent, should there be any anomaly with the vehicle. But it was not needed as we saw a smooth ride into orbit. With 35 minutes to go until launch, propellant loading began, filling the fuel tanks for those nine Merlin 1D engines. And just about five minutes before launch, Dragon entered terminal count, meaning its onboard computers took control of the vehicle. And as we just saw on your screen a couple seconds ago, uh, at 12 p.m. noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific time, those nine Merlin 1D engines ignited and Falcon 9 lifted off from Space Launch Complex 39A, marking the sixth time humans rode Dragon into orbit. With Falcon 9 first stage at full power, our crew began their journey to the International Space Station. Just after the T plus nine minute mark, the first stage landed on the autonomous spaceport drone ship stationed out in the Atlantic Ocean. A couple minutes after that, we had spacecraft separation where we saw Dragon finally flying free. And about 40 minutes after liftoff at 9.49 a.m. Pacific time, Dragon executed the phase burn. This was the first of five major burns required to raise Dragon's orbit and position it for approach to the International Space Station. Dragon raised its orbit using the Draco thrusters over the last several hours as it chases down the International Space Station. And just a few hours ago, the boost burn took place at 6.31 a.m. Pacific time. The boost burn put our crew in an orbit where Dragon's apogee, or highest point, will be 10 kilometers lower than the station. After that, we executed the close coelliptic burn at 7.16 a.m. Pacific. The close burn placed Dragon on an orbit roughly coelliptic with the space station, meaning it was maintaining an orbit roughly 10 kilometers lower than the station the entire way around Earth. That's in contrast to only being 10 kilometers lower than the station during Dragon's apogee, or the highest point in its orbit, uh, which is achieved by the boost burn. And from there, at 8.26 a.m., we executed the fourth major maneuver known as the transfer burn. This is where we're raising Dragon's apogee, or highest point of its orbit, to just 2.5 kilometers lower than station. Then we rounded everything out with a final co-elliptic burn at 9.12 a.m. Pacific time to once again maintain a constant orbit lower than the station, this time just two and a half kilometers below. This was a shorter burn lasting just over 30 seconds. Now we're getting into the approach initiation and final stages of Dragon's rendezvous with the space station. This is also where we start integrated operations between the Dragon control team here in Hawthorne and the space station flight controllers in Mission Control Houston. The teams will transition to integrated operations roughly 45 minutes prior to approach initiation, which has already happened. 
During the approach, SpaceX flight controllers were, will work in tandem with the NASA team in Houston to maneuver Dragon Endurance to the proper attitude and initialize the navigation sensors used for the methodical approach to station. Now, they'll also activate and test out a number of systems on Dragon, including the bi-directional communications with the station using the C2V2 system. C2V2 stands for Common Communications for Visiting Vehicles. It sets up a data stream from Dragon to the station, giving another path for Dragon telemetry to come to the ground and giving uh, additional command capability for the astronauts aboard the station. At approximately 12.29 p.m. Pacific, Dragon Draco thrusters on Dragon will fire for the approach initiation burn when Dragon is about two and a half kilometers below station and just about seven kilometers behind it. This will swing Dragon up until it's about a quarter mile, which is around 400 meters directly below the space station. This maneuver will also move Dragon inside one of two checkpoints around the station that requires a set of go, no-go poles with the different control teams. The first checkpoint is called the Approach Ellipsoid, or as you might hear it called, the AE. It's an imaginary shape measuring four kilometers by two kilometers by two kilometers, essentially a large three-dimensional oval. Before Dragon is given permission to move inside the Approach Ellipsoid, the capsule is configured to be on what is known as a 24-hour safe trajectory. This means that if Dragon lost all control to its thrusters, it would be at least 24 hours before its trajectory would move inside the approach ellipsoid. That's right. The NASA and SpaceX teams will do a go, no-go pole to move Dragon inside the keep-out sphere, another checkpoint that consists of an imaginary sphere around the station with a radius of 200 meters. Flight controllers use this to monitor all arriving and departing vehicles. It's another chance to confirm all of the guidance, navigation, and control systems are working correctly on Dragon before moving it closer to station. It carries a similar requirement on the orbital trajectory that if Dragon were to somehow lose control of its thrusters, it and the space station would be safe for four orbits, or about six hours, rather than the 24 hours required to enter the approach ellipsoid. Once Dragon arrives at the 400 meter below station uh, mark, it will be at what is known as waypoint zero and will be the first checkpoint during our approach. The vehicle can hold here at 400 meters, uh, but if all of its systems check out, we can continue the approach to waypoint one. Dragon's move from waypoint zero to waypoint one will swing it up and out in front of the station, arriving at a distance of approximately 220 meters. At this point, it will be on what we call the docking axis, which essentially means it is directly in front of the docking port, and the crew are headed to the forward-most port on station, the node 2 forward port. Dragon has docked to the node 2 forward port before, and it utilizes the international docking adapters. Um, that's where those are located, which have been installed for these new commercial spacecraft flights, as well as any other future spacecraft that also use the international docking standard. Once Dragon is only 20 meters away at waypoint two, the spacecraft focuses on aligning its docking system with the international docking adapter, or IDA. We may hear the call out CHOP, which stands for Crew Hands Off Point, a little less than 30 seconds before docking. At this point, any aborts will have to be done automatically by Dragon. And then it will be the moment we've all been waiting for when our crew arrives at the space station. Dragon will fly in and make contact with the IDA, giving us what we call soft capture. The soft capture ring then retracts until sensors indicate it's time for 12 hooks to drive in in place to give us a hard capture and firmly secure Dragon to its new home on the space station. The space station crew, namely NASA astronaut Chell Lindgren, will manually pressurize the vestibule or the area between the Dragon hatch and the station hatch. Meanwhile, umbilicals that provide power, audio, and data connections from the station to Dragon are put in place. And it's time for leak checks and hatch opening, which is currently timelined to come a little more than two hours following docking. 
Yeah, as you said, Sandra, uh, it is a moment that we've all been waiting for. As you heard Shaniqua mention, uh, it's been about a 25-hour journey thus far. Uh, and so we're very much looking forward to getting the Crew 5 crew on board uh, with docking coming uh, later this afternoon. So at this point in time, uh, the crew has put their suits on. Um, when the suits are on, they will complete a leak check of those suits uh, to make sure that the integrity of the suits are, are still good, make sure all the zippers are up all the way and the visor is locked in place. Um, and then at that point, we'll be given the okay to uh, basically begin the dynamic activities. The suit is required to be put on for the dynamic activities of Dragon. Yep, that's exactly right. And they do wear that spacesuit just in case they were to lose cabin pressure or have any other type of emergency scenario which would require them to wear the suit. So like you said, during those more dynamic phases, like during launch and docking, we do have the crew in the suit. But during the other times uh, when they are traveling to the space station, they're able to get out of the suit, float around and enjoy their time in space, have some food, get some rest, and just really relax and get excited for the moment that they dock to the space station. Absolutely. I've said it before, if I were an astronaut inside Dragon, uh, my face would just be stuck to the window. I would be looking out constantly. <laughs> I know there's a lot of things that the astronauts can do to fill their time. Um, of course, just like astronaut time is on station, uh, very uh, scheduled. Uh, it is also pretty scheduled while in Dragon as well in terms of uh, preparing for upcoming burns. Uh, even their sleep periods are, are scheduled as well. Yep, absolutely. And speaking of upcoming burns, we're now just about two minutes away from that ap approach initiation burn. Um, as we mentioned before, there's been several other burns that have led us up to this point, um, but this one really starts to get us into the position to be able to dock uh, with the space station here um, coming up pretty soon. Absolutely. Now we were talking about the suits a little bit earlier. Uh, for those of you that might be unfamiliar with the space suits that the uh, Dragon astronauts wear while inside the capsule. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to bring you a live view from inside the capsule as you can see it for yourself shortly. Uh, but they are all custom made for each astronaut. Um, they are uh, a really well-fitting suit, as Sandra mentioned. The um, idea being not only uh, having a safety component to it as well, but also a, a design element. We wanted it to look like a spacesuit uh, from the future. So um, we designed them to be really well-fitting. As I mentioned, they are custom-fitted for each astronaut, uh, and they don't have to wear it the whole time. They are able to remove the suit or doff suits um, during more downtime periods. Uh, as I mentioned, the suits are only required for the more dynamic activities for the Dragon capsule. Exactly, and we are now just about one minute away from the start of the approach initiation burn. This burn will last about 90 seconds, and um, the Draco thrusters will be used for this, this particular burn. And this will bring Dragon inside of the approach ellip the ellipsoid, that is that uh, two kilometer by two kilometer by four kilometer or invisible line around the space station. Once we are within the um, approach ellipsoid, we are in what is a 24-hour safe trajectory. So again, as we mentioned, if something were to go wrong, and while we never expect that, we do have mitigations in place um, just in case if something were to go wrong and we were to lose control of the thrusters, it would be at least 24 hours um, before it would be um, any... It, it, excuse me, inside of the approach ellipsoid any further. That's right. And for those that might be unfamiliar with the docking, excuse me, the docking sequence of Dragon, uh, it is completely autonomous. Dragon is basically steering, driving itself. The crew inside Dragon are monitoring the, um, on their crew panels, their touchscreen crew panels. They're able to monitor uh, all the progress. Uh, if necessary, they are able to take manual control at any point. Um, but at, oh, and there on your screen, we actually have a live view um, from Dragon looking at the station. Dragon, SpaceX on Dragon to ground. No response required. AI burn in 30 seconds. Dragon copies that. And there we just heard the... Okay, Dragon copies that. We were just about to call you. We had a successful intercom check on section 5 of 4 decimal zero one zero. Copy. Good intercom check. Copy, yeah, we'll good intercom checks, and we'll see you on the other side of the burn. That so that was just uh, mission control here in Hawthorne, which you see there on your screen, uh, just letting Dragon know that they were 30 seconds away from the approach initiation burn.
which at this point in time um, is, uh, like I was saying before, is everything is, in approaching station is highly choreographed. Um, everything is super controlled. Uh, to make sure that the safety of the station, the safety of the Dragon uh, crew uh, is first and foremost. Um, and that's why we basically have all these different phases uh, and checkpoints that we have to reach in order to uh, arrive and depart the station. Exactly, and as we said, that burn is expected to last about 90 seconds, so not a super long burn. Um, but we should hear uh, confirmation that that burn is underway here shortly. Um, and uh, the, the crew has already began those leak checks earlier, as you said. Um, now that we're starting into some of these more dynamic phases, um, they are suited up um, just like they were yesterday when, when they did go ahead and launch. So we're standing by for the start of the approach initiation burn. We should hear it any second now. And the Draco thrusters on Dragon have just started to fire for the approach initiation burn. Dragon is currently about two and a half kilometers below station and just about seven kilometers behind it. This burn is going to swing Dragon up until it's about 400 meters or about a quarter mile directly below Dragon, the station. Dragon, SpaceX on the big loop. Approach initiation complete and nominal. As a reminder, you may now review your impulsive retreat recovery cue cards if desired. And you did just hear those words that the approach initiation burn is complete and was successful. So this maneuver does move Dragon inside one of two checkpoints around the station that requires a set of go, no-go poles with the different control teams. The first checkout is called the approach ellipsoid, which we've been chatting a bit about, and you may hear it called the AE. It's an imaginary shape measuring four kilometers by two kilometers by two kilometers, essentially a large three-dimensional oval. And before Dragon is given permission to move inside the approach ellipsoid, the capsule is configured to be on what is known as a 24-hour safe trajectory, which again means that if Dragon lost all control to its Dragon, thrusters- Dragon, SpaceX on Dragon to ground for waste system. Go ahead, I'm Dragon Ground. Josh, I've got a bit of an odd request. Hey, Josh, here from the back I've got room a bit of an odd request here from the back room. It's to verify docked. that the waste system funnel is docked, it, as you would usage, expect post usage, post usage uh, and it's been left in that configuration. How copy? So again, Dragon is now within the approach ellipsoid, which means that if Dragon lost all control to its thrusters, it would be at That's least- SpaceX Dragon on Dragon to ground. Uh, we just confirmed that after the last usage, it was plugged back in uh, firmly and Velcroed into place. Uh, let us know if you need us to get out of the seat and confirm. For the confirmation, Josh, that's good enough. Thanks for the confirmation, Josh. That's good enough uh, for us at the moment. And uh, we'll stand by for your completion of suit donning. And those words from the ground up to the crew as they step through their procedures. Now that they are within the approach ellipsoid, again, that means it would be at least 24 hours before its trajectory would move inside the approach ellipsoid if we were to lose control of the thrusters for some reason. That's right. So uh, as you heard a little bit ago, um, we did have that approach initiation. Um, Dragon does have the ability to perform a mid-course maneuver about halfway through the journey to waypoint zero, uh, and that's just to help ensure that Dragon is positioned correctly under the station uh, 400 meters below.
About halfway from our starting point of approach initiation to waypoint zero, Dragon will execute a small mid-course maneuver. And this is just to fine tune our approach to ensure we're targeting a precise 0.400 meters directly below the station. Yeah. Now we can see that Crew Dragon has a very busy afternoon ahead, but even in space, it still takes two to tango. Uh, the International Space Station is also a factor in the mix for this. Um, it is very much a, uh, a choreographed dance, basically, um, the, the whole approach operation. Um, at this point, let's check in over at uh, NASA Houston with Shaniqua Vereen uh, to see how things are going on over there. Thanks, Kate. Good afternoon and welcome back to Mission Control Houston at NASA's Johnson Space Center. Inside the space station flight control room, teams are being led by Flight Director Greg Whitney for Dragon's approach and docking. On board station, there is currently seven astronauts and cosmonauts, including NASA's Chell Lingren, Bob Hines, Jessica Watkins, Frank Rubio. Copy Dragon, suits are done, crew are seated. Uh, we are ready to step into leak checks. We'll meet you over in 4.011 and we'll bring the cameras back on board. And copy, stepping into 4.011, check. And you just heard confirmation from the crew to the core in Mission Control SpaceX. Again, there's seven crew members awaiting Crew 5 as they arrive and dock to the International Space Station. That's including NASA's Chell Lingren, Bob Hines, Jessica Watkins, Frank Rubio, and the current station commander, European Space Agency astronaut, Chris, Samantha Christopher Reddy, and NASA's cosmonaut, and Ross Cosmos cosmonauts Sergei Prokopiev and Dmitry Patelin. The crew is awake and they have be they begin to continue preparations for Crew 5's arrival. NASA astronaut Chell Lindgren will be primed to set up laptops to monitor the approach and docking of Crew 5 on the ground. On Crew 5, on the ground, teams will work together to feather solar arrays about three hours prior to docking, which is a multi-step process which protects the arrays from plumes and keeps them safe when the vehicle arrive about 1.5 hours ahead of docking around 2 p.m. Central Time, we just passed that mark, we will hand over control of station's thrusters to Russian gyroscopes so station can have a finer tune out of control while Dragon approaches. Once soft dock is complete, we will hand control back to the U.S. gyroscopes. The teams on the ground image control Houston and the systems on board the station remain go to receive Dragon. And we're looking for a, a docking time of 3.57 p.m. Central Time, 4.57 p.m. Eastern Time. That's the latest from Mission Control Houston. Back over to you, Hawthorne. Thanks, Shaniqua. So glad to hear that everything is going smoothly in Mission Control Houston. And as you have this view of Mission Control Houston there, you could see one of our flight consoles, the Cronus console, and they are in charge of all of the cameras and videos and help configure that um, throughout uh, the International Space Station. And they did actually get views of Dragon when it was over 1,300 miles away from the International Space Station. I'm not sure if that's a record, but they have been tracking Dragon as it approaches for quite some time. We'll of course continue to see views of Dragon as it gets closer and closer and see Dragon grow in the field of view. Yeah, I follow a couple of the Kronos controllers on Twitter, and it's so amazing to see uh, the images that they're able to capture from the station. Um, and it's, I never realized it, but it's actually quite 
quite a skill to be able to <laughs> capture the things they do. And it makes sense because the station is constantly moving. And uh, yeah, especially during Hurricane Ian, it was pretty cool to see the images coming from ISS. So uh, all that being said, uh, now while we wait for our next milestone, let's take a moment to meet our crew. Nicole Mann holds a Master of Science in Mechanical Engineering. Dragon on Dragon to Ground. We're at step 2.2, 4 decimal 011, and we are ready to take this. Dragon, SpaceX, you are go to pressurize. We are following along on the ground. And you just heard that call out that they are go to Dragon start. Dragon is a go to initiate the two-week check. And we did hear that those suit leak checks are underway. During the more dynamic phases of flight, we do have the crew get suited up into their spacesuits. And right now we are running through a suit leak check, making sure that it can get pressurized to the right levels that we need it to be, should that be uh, necessary for any reason. So let's continue to learn a little bit more about our crew as they step through those procedures. We do have Nicole Mann on board of Crew 5. She holds a Master of Science in Mechanical Engineering and is a Colonel in the Marine Corps. She was an FA-18 Hornet and Super Hornet test pilot and deployed twice aboard aircraft carriers in support of combat operations in Iraq and Afghanistan. Nicole was selected by NASA in June of 2013 and in the years that followed led the astronaut corps in the development of hardware in the Artemis program. Today, the Crew-5 commander will be flying into space well, she is in space now. She's uh, in space for the very first time. And once she reaches the space station here shortly, she will be the very first Native American woman to stay on station. Now, Josh Cassida, uh, our pilot, he grew up in White Bear Lake, Minnesota. The physicist and U.S. Navy test pilot flew the P-3C and the P-8A and flew in 23 combat missions. He later became an instructor at the U.S. Naval Test Pilot School, which is a common path military officers take to join NASA. Cassida is one of more than 100 graduates who became astronauts going all the way back to the Mercury program. Now, more recently, he served as capsule commander in Mission Control, but today he is the pilot on board Dragon. Next up is Koichi Wakata, who is one of the mission specialists. He's a Japanese astronaut who has a doctorate in aerospace engineering and in 1996 became the first Japanese mission specialist aboard the Space Shuttle Endeavor for STS-72. Altogether, Kuichi has flown in four space shuttle missions, a Russian Soyuz, and was on a long duration stay aboard the International Space Station. During his two decade career as an astronaut, Kuichi has spent 11 months in space. And our second mission specialist on Crew 5, Russian cosmonaut Anna Kikina. She was born in Russia and graduated with honors from the Novosporsk. Uh, Dragon, we saw four good SUV checks, and those numbers look great. Dragon, SpaceX, we see all the same, four good leak checks, and we've got a healthy vehicle headed towards the mid-course maneuver 13 minutes from now. All right, so we just heard there that they had four good suit leak checks, uh, so we are continuing ahead. Uh, now, Anna in 2012 uh, officially became a candidate for the position of test cosmonaut. Crew 5 will be her first flight into space as part of the recent resumption of integrated crews on U.S. crew spacecraft and the Russian Soyuz with the Russian State Space Corporation Roscosmos. 
That's right. So as we mentioned, we do have three first time flyers and then Koichi Wakata is our veteran astronaut on board. Um, but yesterday it was really great to see as the crew got into orbit. Uh, they had their zero G indicator. So cool. <laughs> this is a tradition um, amongst crews who have uh, some type of indicator that shows them once they have reached the microgravity environment of space. And so yesterday we did get a glimpse of it. Um, it was a small stuffed Einstein uh, doll and we had some great words from NASA astronaut Josh Cassida who shared the significance of that zero G indicator. If you didn't catch it live yesterday, I highly recommend going back and checking it out in the broadcast. It was pretty special. Yeah, it was really touching. Um, I also loved that during the launch broadcast, um, Bob Benkin, who was one of our two space dads uh, that flew on the NASA SpaceX Demo 2 mission, actually brought the uh, zero-g indicator from that mission, his son's uh, sequined stuffed dinosaur named Tremor. Um, many of us here at SpaceX and probably also at NASA, uh, we have a, a replica Tremor at our desks, and so it was really special and cool to, to see the real Tremor um, on the launch broadcast yesterday. Yeah, that was very special, absolutely. And speaking of the launch broadcast yesterday, we also talked about the 50th uh, SpaceX suit. We had a helmet that we were able to uh, talk about, uh, and Jesse shared some great information on that. Um, but the 50th SpaceX suit, that's quite the milestone. Yeah, it definitely is. As I mentioned before, um, they were designed in-house. They are built in-house by hand uh, by our very skilled uh, team of spacesuit technicians and engineers. Uh, it's quite an accomplishment to uh, basically be able to provide each astronaut with their own unique suit. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, they are custom fitted to each astronaut. Um, so there is no option to switch them out <laughs> or mix them up during, uh, during flight. Uh, of course, they are safely stowed away whenever the astronauts are not wearing them. Uh, but we're really proud that um, we were able to design and build uh, and test a spacesuit of the future and each Crew Dragon astronaut gets um, one of their own for each mission. <laughs> Absolutely, and as we did mention just a couple of minutes ago, we did have four good suit leak checks, which is just checking off another milestone as we approach the International Space Station ahead of docking. Um, now, if you are following along with us and would like to ask a question, please be sure to do so. You can use the hashtag AskNASA, and we'll answer as many as we can while we're on air. Um, so let's see if we have any Ask NASA questions right now that have came in. All right, it looks like we do have one from Bob O'Dare Jr. who wants to know what time did Crew 5 wake up? Well, typically the crew has a prescribed sleep and wake cycle that they utilize on the journey uphill. But for Crew 5, they had a rest period or an off-duty time period. So they were able to get out of their spacesuits, get comfortable and get some rest. They did wake up earlier this morning, a little earlier than expected, which makes complete sense. It's probably a little bit like Christmas morning for them. <laughs> They're eager to get the day started and get docked. Looks like we have another question. Uh, what kind of meals do the astronauts eat prior to docking? Do they get to choose their meals? And this comes to us from uh, KC7Z1E. So the crew has a variety of different meals that they have the option to eat while they are in space. Now, there is two real different types of meals. It's important to distinguish between. While in Dragon, they have um, something similar to an MRE or a meal ready to eat that they can easily eat on the journey uphill. Once they do arrive to the space station, they have rehydratable food that has been dehydrated in our food lab in Houston. And and they have a variety of different foods that they can eat, macaroni and cheese, different meat products, pasta. Our food scientists really try and keep the menu different for the crew so that they are excited about what they have to eat. If you think about they're up there for six months at a time. Oftentimes they don't have a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables. Those things can come up occasionally on cargo resupply missions, um, but we do hear a lot from the crew that that's something that they miss. So the food scientists in the food lab do try and keep it very interesting and help um, the crew be excited about their food. And then of course the crew will plan out their menu and the meals that they would like before their mission. And sometimes they'll swap out um, with 
uh, it is the International Space Station, so we do have an international crew. So that comes with different types of foods for those different areas. So sometimes there's some trading back and forth that goes on as well. Yeah, I love the Twitter feed come the holiday seasons um, for the International Space Station because uh, you, th we see the crew actually sharing meals together, um, <laughs> really just like passing things around for, so that everybody can get a taste uh, for whatever holiday it is being celebrated uh, on the ISS. And I like that the crew gets to share a taste of home and also get to maybe try some new flavors as well. Yes, exactly. All right, it looks like we have another question from Hillary. And she said, I heard earlier in the broadcast that some science payloads were flying up on Dragon with Crew 5, but missed the details. What new experiments are they carrying up to the space station? Well, we could talk about this question for the rest of the broadcast <laughs> because it truly is the International Space Station and the point of it is to do science research and investigations. So throughout the Crew-5 mission, there's over 200 science experiments that the crew is going to work on. So of course, we can't get into all the details about those, um, but I do highly encourage folks to follow along with us on social media, um, the ISS research account, um, goes through a lot of that. And then we just had the 2022 version of Benefits for Humanity come out that Looks lists so cool. yeah. a plethora of science that has been done on board the space station and how it directly benefits he us here on Earth. Um, so check that out if you're interested. Um, but some of the highlights are uh, life science uh, in cardiovascular health, particularly bioprinting and fluid behavior and microgravity to help prepare for human exploration beyond low Earth orbit and to benefit life here on Earth, like I said. Super cool. Uh, now, the next milestone that we have coming up for the crew is that mid-course maneuver uh, that's coming up in a little over three minutes. Um, as we mentioned before, this is an opportunity to make sure that the Dragon spacecraft is still on the right trajectory heading toward the International Space Station. Um, everything is super choreographed and controlled as Dragon approaches and also when it departs Space Station. Uh, so basically, the next couple hours are filled with various maneuvers, burns, uh, and checkpoints that Dragon has to get through um, and approvals in order to ultimately make that final contact uh, with the station. And then a couple of other things are going to happen as we continue um, to get closer to the space station. Um, so uh, once we do dock uh, in a short time from now, um, there will be the soft dock that happens first, uh, and that is when we have initial capture and contact uh, with Space Station. And then a short time later, the hooks will drive in, which connects us uh, through a hard mate to the Space Station. And that's when all 12 of those hooks will clamp together and we'll have that great connection. And it does happen in two sets of six. So we'll see the first six close and then the next six. But like you said, um, we're still a little ways away from that. We are looking ahead uh, to the mid-course uh, maneuver here in just a couple of minutes from now. That's right. There on your screen, you can see Mission Control here in Hawthorne. Sandra and I are sitting on the second floor in uh, SpaceX headquarters, and that Mission Control Center is just over our shoulders here. Uh, that is where the SpaceX team is uh, monitoring Dragon and the crew. Um, it's also only half of the puzzle piece. Of course, the control, Mission Control Center uh, over at Houston is also part of the mix. Um, we had uh, updates from Shaniqua Vereen earlier in the broadcast um, and it really goes to show as I mentioned before just everything being highly controlled uh, both teams very integrated with these operations along with the crew in space um, earlier we heard some communication happening between uh, here at mission control as well as dragon um, though that communication that we heard was actually with the uh, SpaceX crew operations and resources engineer or core um, that person for this shift right now is Jake Vendel. Um, of course, we have people on console 24 seven while Dragon is in orbit. Uh, and so we basically have various shifts and this shift's core is Jake Vendel. Uh, and there are actually, you see him on the left-hand side of your screen. And we are hearing that we're just about a minute away from the start of the mid-course maneuver. Again, this can be a small burn or it could be a significant correction. It really just fine tunes the approach um, to reach waypoint uh, 
zero. And so the, that swing from approach initiation to waypoint zero is pretty big. So this is just that chance to really fine tune, make sure everything is looking as it should as we uh, move ahead to docking. Absolutely. Now, as we mentioned before, we are taking your questions. So reach out to us on Twitter using the hashtag AskNASA. Uh, we would like to take as many questions as we can get through. Um, we are a little bit more than an hour away from uh, docking of crew to station. Um, and yeah, we've taken a couple of questions so far and we would love to get more um, as the broadcast continues. So we are standing by to hear that that mid-course maneuver has begun. Endurance is about two kilometers from... Station Houston, fish ground two for chill and window shutters. Hey, Chell, we've had some ready KU, so we just wanted to confirm that you're able to get those window shutters closed in Cupola and Lab. Uh, affirmative, uh, shutters are closed, window, uh, I'm sorry, shutters are closed both uh, in the lab and the Cupola, thanks. We copy, thank you. And you thank just... You. And uh, I am complete with the tool set up through step seven. See that Pluto came on board uh, to help with SSC 727 uh, uh, with the MPEG, MPEG uh, streaming tool. We copy, thanks for the status. And you just heard those words from the ground up to NASA astronaut Chell Lindgren uh, discussing the shutters in the cupola. The cupola is that window to the world. It's one of the places that the astronauts love to hang out when they have free time because you have a beautiful view of the Earth floating by below you. Um, but it does have shutters on it that can be open and closed. And for docking operations, they want to be sure that those are configured closed. So he was just giving a confirmation of that. Um, so again, we are uh, just seconds away from the mid-course maneuver beginning. And the mid-course maneuver is underway. So we did just start that mid-course maneuver, which again is done about halfway from our starting point of the approach initiation to waypoint zero. This burn helps to fine tune our approach to ensure we're targeting a precise point 400 meters directly below the station. Once Dragon arrives at 400 meters below station, it will be at what is known as waypoint zero and will be the first checkpoint during our approach. The vehicle can hold here at 400 meters, but if all of its systems check out, we can continue to the approach, we can continue the approach to waypoint zero. Uh, now we are hearing that that mid course maneuver was completed. Uh, so uh, yeah, the next, um, uh, the next major activity that we have is that approach zero um, and about a uh, little bit more than 16 minutes until that point. And so once Endurance does dock to the space station, this will be its second time docking to the space station. Uh, it last docked there just shy of a year ago on November 11th of 2021, and that was with Crew 3, of course, um, and that was NASA astronauts Raja Chari. Dragon, SpaceX on the big loop, mid-course correction maneuver complete and nominal. Trajectory is converged on waypoint zero. Dragon copy. And you... And you just heard those words there that the mid-course maneuver was successful and went just as planned. So we are still on track for docking today. 
Um, as I was saying, so once Endurance docks, this will be um, its second time on station. It last uh, docked there on November 11th of 2021, and it just undocked on May 5th of this year. So it hasn't even been a year since uh, it's been on station. So pretty neat that it's going to be back again. All right, so as we mentioned, we are taking your questions on social media using the hashtag AskNASA, and it looks like we have another one coming our way. Uh, this one comes to us from Jordan T. How fast is Crew Dragon, Drew Dragon, although I like that name, I think it's a typo, <laughs> Crew Dragon traveling at the time of docking? Yeah, this is a great question. Um, in order to catch up and really stay in orbit, it has to be going just as fast as the International Space Station, which is about 17,500 miles per hour. So the whole idea is to go fast enough to uh, basically not fall back to Earth. Uh, so yeah, it's going, it's going pretty fast. <laughs> <laughs> and it's incredible to think uh, that it really gets up to that velocity in just a matter of minutes uh, after it lifts off uh, from Earth. That's right, and it looks like we do have another question here um, that is asking, why does the flight to the space station take 24 hours? Um, so we did touch on this earlier. It's all based upon the phasing and where um, the International Space Station is at the time of launch. Uh, we do launch from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. So depending on when that launch window is, sometimes it can be a shorter um, launch to docking phasing. Sometimes it's a little bit longer. For this particular one, it's going to be about 29 hours from launch to docking. Yeah. Uh, similarly, on Dragon's Ride Home, um, it, it kind of depends on a lot of things. Um, Orbital mechanics being one of them, but also weather. Uh, so sometimes the return journey to Earth can take a matter of a couple of hours, or excuse me, a few hours to, uh, depending on weather at the splashdown locations, could take up to 40, or excuse me, uh, 24 or even a few more hours. Um, so yeah, everything really has to do with orbital mechanics and <laughs> trying to get to uh, the right place at the right time. Uh, and as we mentioned at uh, dur during the launch broadcast, everything has to be super precise and really instantaneous uh, because the Dragon is catching up to the space station. Uh, those orbital mechanics really dictate down to the millisecond, the moment that Falcon 9 has to lift off with the capsule. Exactly right. And here coming up soon, we should start to get some views of Dragon as it approaches the space station, or we might be able to get some views from Dragon of the space station. Um, so looking forward to seeing those views here shortly. And there it is. There is the International Space Station as seen from Dragon as it approaches. We'll continue to see this grow larger and larger in the frame of view. And now this great view from inside the Dragon capsule. Yeah, this is our first look inside capsule this morning. As we mentioned before, uh, the crew put their suits on. We got through four successful suit leak checks. And there we can see the, the same panels that the crew is using to monitor. So when we hear the crew communicating, they might be saying that we're go for section four or we're in step 2.6. Uh, um, it's uh, right there in front of your eyes. You can see the procedure that they are also running through and monitoring. Uh, now on either side of the procedure screen um, was a, a cool visualization of where uh, which thruster is firing when. Um, so kind of a nice visual to be able to tell um, how Dragon is steering itself. Absolutely, and in this view here of the International Space Station, you can make out the solar arrays. Um, those are those um, pieces on either side. Now, right now, Dragon is getting its power from its own solar arrays that are found on the trunk of the vehicle. But once it does dock to Space Station, some umbilicals will be hooked up, which will provide power um, from the space station. So at that point, Dragon will be configured to be receiving its, its power from the space station. So a couple of things are going to happen as we uh, reach waypoint one. Um, the sensors on Dragon are going to uh, basically lock on the forward docking point port, um, and that is really the target that we're going for. And then once it is locked on, it will automatically deploy the soft capture ring. Again, that ring is composed of a ring. Dragon, SpaceX on the big loop. Ground is go for approach zero. And 
We will enable the maneuver shortly. Expected start time is 2017 UTC. Dragon will continue approach through waypoint one toward waypoint two. Dragon copies, we are looking for the approach allowed for. And you just heard those words that we are continuing the approach towards waypoint zero. This is that first checkpoint that we will have today and uh, we'll be able to proceed or we could hold here if we needed to. Um, so at this point, if we did lose control of Dragon for some reason, it would be at least four orbits or about six hours uh, before we would move inside the keep out sphere. And it looks like that is a view from station of Dragon. So there we can see planet Earth uh, rotating uh, as Dragon catches up to the space station. Uh, as I mentioned before, I love views like this because it kind of shows just how <laughs> how grand all the operations are. Uh, as, as we've said multiple times, everything is very controlled and choreographed. Um, and it's pretty cool to see Dragon just get closer and closer. Um, I would, we saw the, the crew in their seats earlier, uh, all strapped in with their suits on. Uh, but as I mentioned before, I would have to, I would personally just want to have my face against the window the whole time, just looking out. And this view that you are seeing, Dragon and the International Space Station are flying 266 statute miles off the coast of Australia. Looks like they're just about to cross over into T Tasmania. Now the International Space Station travels 17,500 miles per hour and orbits the Earth every 90 minutes, which means the crew on board station sees a sunrise and a sunset every 45 minutes. So when you think about it like that, it really puts it into perspective just how fast the crew is traveling. And it looks like Cronus is trying to zoom in for us. There we can see uh, that the nose cone it has been deployed. Um, we did that several minutes uh, after liftoff. Uh, I think it was around T plus 12 minutes or so. Um, and we do that once Dragon has already passed through the atmosphere of Earth when it's in, uh, then once it gets into the vacuum of space. Um, we deploy the nose cone after it separates, after the capsule and trunk separate from the second stage. Of course, we want to keep all of the guidance control and navigation systems and the dock, uh, and the dock itself protected during the ascent phase. Uh, but once the Dragon capsule is in the vacuum of space, we're able to open it up. And uh, I love this shot here because um, it's very Inception-esque to me <laughs> because the station is looking at Dragon, Dragon, Dragon is looking at station. Um, yeah, and it's just really cool to be able to see Dragon get closer and closer. Uh, now, for those of you that are looking at Dragon on the left-hand side, and we're seeing it from the top down. Um, we can we can see uh, a blinking light as well as uh, barely make out that uh, that forward hatch. Um, this, of course, is the hatch that we, we will be utilizing to dock with the station. Uh, you might notice four points. Well, technically three because it looks like the fourth one at the top is covered up. Uh, four points, just like almost tiny arms sticking out. Uh, those are actually the fins on the dragon trunk. So as I mentioned, we are looking at dragon from the top down, uh, and those fins are what we're seeing from this bird's eye view. Um, we can see them a little better um, once, you know, whenever the capsules, for example, at the launch pad, uh, and those fins are basically there for aerodynamic purposes. But just kind of a cool different view that we get from dragon. Um, this is the first time that we're, we're really seeing a closer view of Dragon in this, uh, from this angle. Absolutely, and we are also beginning to see the space station come into view more and more. You can make out some of those solar arrays. Again, that's going to continue um, to just get more clear. Right now, Dragon is about 550 meters away from the space station and closing. So yeah, in that view, you can really see the solar rays starting to come in, get a little bit sharper.
So we are looking ahead to the next major milestone, which will be Waypoint Zero, when we're about 400 meters away from the International Space Station. We have touched on this briefly, but that view of Dragon um, on the left of the screen there, now it looks like we're getting another view from the space station, and you can see it just barely. It's a white dot coming in. Um, it is hard to tell there with the clouds uh, that are um, on Earth, but we'll see that grow larger and larger. That is, again, controlled by one of the flight control positions in Mission Control Houston called Cronus. They're able to position the cameras in a variety of different ways that allow us to get these beautiful views of Dragon as well as the Earth. And Kate, you had mentioned we did get some views of Hurricane Ian as it was passing over the United States, um, but we are able to get some views here of Dragon with that nose cone open like you mentioned. might hear some background noise uh, behind Sandra and myself. We are located here at SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California. Uh, that we are an active operations environment. <laughs> so, of course, while we have folks seated inside mission control, um, just kind of over to our left, um, the rest of the building is uh, a little bit more noisy, I would say. It's pretty quiet in mission control. Uh, but yes, yeah, so you might hear some chairs moving or some uh, fork trucks behind us uh, as we are uh, basically, you know, we still continue production of the Falcon 9 vehicle here, um, regardless of, uh, you know, the operations that we have going on in, in mission control. We're now less than 460 meters from the space station. And Kate, you had mentioned yesterday that it's a company tradition for SpaceX to come out and watch the launch um, and everyone to view it and the big screens there. Um, so I definitely uh, noticed the excitement when we were doing the launch broadcast. Everyone was cheering very loud. Uh -huh. It was uh, cool to be a part of that. A little hard to uh, deliver the launch line, I would imagine. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we get really excited for launches here um, and it's, really awesome whenever it's in the middle of the day as well um, because uh, people are able to take a break from work and come down and stand behind mission control and, and, and cheer the crew on. Um, it's, it's quite an experience. I still, um, you know, if I'm not hosting, I try to watch uh, from mission control and uh, I still remember the first couple launches that I ever got to witness as a, a new employee. And it's, it, it's really powerful uh, to be able to, to stand here with colleagues and uh, be able to you know, really unify and, and cheer on the mission. And we are just about a minute away from waypoint zero. Four hundred and twenty seven meters away from the International Space Station. And we're about ninety seconds away from uh, that waypoint zero. As we've mentioned before, waypoint zero uh, basically means that Dragon is uh, directly below the station um, uh, by about 400 meters. Looks like we got some cool views from a coastline of some sort uh, as Dragon and Space Station continue to orbit. The International Space Station is flying 
over some beautiful views. Like you mentioned, it's 262 statute miles um, approaching Port Bia as well as uh, Fiji. So that Gosh. explains the beautiful, beautiful views we were seeing. <laughs> That's certainly a location name I can recognize. <laughs> standing by for confirmation of waypoint zero. And we have just reached waypoint zero, which means Dragon is now 400 meters directly below the space station. And we can definitely see it now in these views coming from the International Space Station. So coming up, Dragon's move from waypoint zero to waypoint one will swing it up and out in front of the station. We'll then pause at a distance of approximately 220 meters. And at this point, we will be on what we call the docking axis, which essentially means it's directly in front of the docking port. We did already hear the teams do a go, no-go pull for this approach, and everything remains go. At this time, Dragon is now 392 meters away from the International Space Station. Great view of Dragon there, once again, from the top down. Um, as we've mentioned before, uh, we keep that nose cone closed through the ascent portion of uh, the mission and then we open it up while Dragon is in the vacuum of space. Um, it's able to provide uh, protection for the various sensors that are used to help Dragon steer itself. Uh, so all the guidance, navigation, uh, and control systems. Uh, it also protects the forward um, hatch, which is what, as I mentioned before, it's what we use to dock to the space station. Um, so it's pretty cool, and all, I think. Um, I think it's pretty neat that uh, the basically the side hatch, which is uh, we, could, we were able to see it just moments ago um, whenever we had a little bit more sunlight reflection over there. Um, but it's cool to think that the side hatch, which is what... Dragon, SpaceX on the big loop. We see the onboard for GNC RELNAV. No crew action required. Both Dragon eyes locked on to mismatching reflectors and are now locking on to their correct targets. Stand by one. Copies. Speaking of those sensors, it sounds like those dragon eyes, which are one of the sensors, there's actually two of them, uh, two of those dragon eyes, um, they are locking on to the appropriate sensors um, on station uh, at this point in time. So as I was saying, uh, yes, yeah, so that forward hatch is what the crew will basically ingress and egress the station from um, to get in and out of the Dragon capsule to station. Um, the side hatch, which was used for crew ingress yesterday while the vehicle was on top of the rocket at pad 39A, that hatch will remain closed until Dragon uh, splashes back down on Earth. Um, so as we mentioned before, um, just making sure that Dragon SpaceX on the big loop for an update. We see both Dragon eyes locked on to their expected retro reflectors. And Dragon is back in approach zero. Uh, we're going to continue marching towards waypoint one here. Dragon copies. We see approach zero and good Dragon eyes.
So as we mentioned before, we have been taking your questions via social uh, media. So be sure to tweet at us using the hashtag AskNASA, uh, and we'll try to get through as many questions as we can. We have um, about an hour left uh, of, until docking is complete, uh, and so we would love to take as many questions as we can. It looks like we have another one coming our way, uh, this time from uh, Lago. Uh, and the question is, what's the objective of this mission? Uh, Sandra, I feel like this is another question that we could probably talk about all day. <laughs> um, but I think in summary, um, the objective for this Crew-5 mission is it's the next operational rotational mission to the space station for a crew of astronauts. Uh, and then sub point two would be science, <laughs> kind of as we were talking about before, really continuing the science objectives um, with this mission, with um, many experiments. Uh, it's honestly conducting experiment, experiments is how the astronauts spend quite a bit of their time on station in addition to exercising and of course eating. Exactly right. And just to add on that, the real um, point of this mission is to learn more about humans and how they interact in the environment of space and how the body changes. All of us on Earth have grown up our entire lives experiencing gravity all the time. It impacts every single thing that we do all day long. But when you remove that from the equation, things act very differently. Things float, water behaves differently, flames behave differently. And we have learned a great deal about this in the more than 20 years that we have been continuously um, inhabiting the International Space Station. And this is really important because as we continue to return to the moon through the Artemis program and then on to Mars, we have to make sure that humans are healthy when they are in a microgravity or a different gravity environment on Mars. And so this mission will continue to help us learn all about that. Absolutely. Yeah, it's it, gravity is kind of something that we take for granted here on Earth, um, even something as simple as your vision um, whenever you're on station uh, can change well with the lack of gravity. So uh, we've got another question. Um, this come one comes to us from Rohan87. Love the uh, Lord of the Rings reference there. Uh, after successful docking, how many minutes uh, does it uh, how many minutes it take to enter into International Space Station? Uh, how are they prepared for this? So it does take a little bit of time. There are a few procedures that- Dragon, SpaceX on the big loop. We do see approach zero in progress with trajectory converged on waypoint one. Expect arrival at waypoint one at approximately 2044 UTC. And we cleaned up your board there after that on board. And we see the cleanup, thanks. So again, to uh, finish up answering this question, it does take a little bit of time. Um, they're not able to open the hatches right away. There's a couple of steps that they need to walk through, including uh, pressurizing the vestibule, that's the space between Dragon and the International Space Station, um, as well as making sure that the leak checks there are good. Once that takes place, the crew is able to open up the hatches and flow onto the space station. Um, so that takes a little less than two hours in total. Now, we just heard moments ago um, that was communication between the crew and um, SpaceX core here at, at Mission Control Hawthorne, uh, just indicating that uh, the, we'll hit the next waypoint, so that would be waypoint one. Um, we're expecting to hit that at um, basically 1.44 p.m. Pacific time, so about 20 minutes from now. And once we do arrive at that waypoint one, that's when Dragon is about 220 meters away from the space station and directly in front of the docking port. The crew is docking to the node two forward port during today's mission. And before they move any further at this point, they will uh, need the permission to move into the keep out sphere.
Dragon now closing in on 300 meters from the International Space Station. As we've mentioned before, this maneuver from waypoint zero uh, to waypoint one basically swings Dragon up and out in front of the station. Uh, it pauses at a distance of approximately 220 meters. Uh, at that point, it will be on uh, what we call the docking axis, which essentially means that it's directly in front of the docking. It is really important that we have these different waypoints because they allow the team to really evaluate the status of the vehicle, the readiness of the space station to receive it. And we do have these checkpoints for all visiting vehicles. And we're continuing to get good views of Dragon as it approaches the International Space Station. International Space Station is currently flying 260 statute miles over the Pacific Ocean. It is approaching the very northern tip of Hawaii. As we've mentioned before, uh, SpaceX flight controllers, which are based here in Hawthorne, are working in tandem with the NASA team in Houston um, to make sure that everything is going accordingly with Dragon um, as it continues this controlled approach to station. And there you do see that very northern tip of Hawaii that we mentioned. Again. Aloha. <laughs> Dragon and the International Space Station flying about 260 statute miles above it. There on the left hand side of your screen is SpaceX core Jake Vendel.
And as a reminder, we are continuing to take your questions using the social media hashtag, on social media rather, using the hashtag AskNASA. So please do send in your questions. We'd love to answer them for you. We do have a question from Ashley who wants to know, even though the astronauts are in zero gravity, can they feel the speed of the Dragon? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, generally, no. So once they are uh, basically you know, at velocity inside Dragon. You don't really feel how fast it's going. It's very similar to whenever you're in a car. Uh, let's say you're in the passenger seat and you're uh, the driver, you know, you're on the freeway. Uh, and if you're going 65 miles an hour, you don't really feel how fast you're going. Uh, you might be able to see it based on looking out the window. Um, but generally speaking, you don't feel it unless if there is a change in that velocity. So if there's braking or if there's acceleration. So similarly, Similarly to Dragon, um, they might be able to feel a Thought we were going to get some comms there, perhaps not. Um, they might be able to feel changes in velocity, uh, but because they are also going as fast as the Dragon capsule itself, they really can't feel that they're actually going 17,500 miles per hour. And that's, of course, at this point in the mission Hello. now. Now, yesterday during launch uh, is a little bit of a different story because the crew, like you said, is experiencing that change in acceleration. So at that point, they are able to really feel those Gs that they're pulling as they do travel a lot faster than they were on the launch pad before they blasted off. Absolutely. So Dragon is now under 300 meters from the space station. Looks like it's about 294 meters away. You can see it continuing to get larger and larger in the screen. This is a really cool shot because now we have something for a frame of reference other than planet Earth. So this view from a camera on the port truss segment of the station, you are just barely seeing the Japanese robotic arm in the very center of the screen there, as well as part of the Japanese logistics module on the right that houses some experiments conducted aboard the space station. So one of our crew members for this flight is Koichi Wakata, who is an uh, astronaut from the uh, Japanese Aerospace Exploration uh, Agency. We're just six, uh, under six minutes until we hit waypoint one. As we've mentioned before, um, this movement from waypoint zero to waypoint one will swing Dragon up and out in front of the station. So if you've been watching that capsule, it has been moving slightly in that frame. Um, yeah, so it'll move up and in front of the station and it'll pause at a distance of two, approximately 220 meters. At that point in time, Dragon will be on what we call the docking axis, uh, which basically means that it's directly in front of the docking port that it will be aiming for. Um, that port is the forward port on node two, uh, which is the Harmony um, module, and that's where both of the international docking adapters, or IDAs, are located. Uh, those were installed for new commercial spacecraft flights uh, and any other future spacecraft that also uh, use the international docking standard. And you could really see in that graphic that was just on your screen how those different burns in this very phased approach really put Dragon into place, into the place that it is now, exactly right in front of the docking adapter. You can really start to make out the International Space Station. You can see the solar arrays there, and even some of the vehicles that are currently docked to the space station. There's right now four vehicles docked to the International Space Station. That includes the SpaceX Freedom capsule, which Crew 4 arrived on and will return back home shortly, as well as the Russian Progress 80 and 81 and the Soyuz MS-22.
Once again, we are heading toward waypoint one, uh, about three and a half minutes until uh, that checkpoint is reached. After that, it will be on to waypoint two, and that is once Dragon is only 20 meters away uh, at waypoint two, the spacecraft will focus on aligning its docking system with the docking adapter. Dragon will fly in and make contact with the docking adapter, and that will give us what we call soft capture. That soft capture ring will then retract until sensors indicate that it's time for the hooks to drive in place, and then give us that hard capture, which firmly secures Dragon to station. And then after that uh, hard capture is confirmed, we'll do leak checks uh, for that hatch opening. And that is always a, a moment that's really fun to watch. Um, and well, I guess I, I should say it takes time, right? Once the hatch is open, it's another several minutes before they can actually egress, but it's uh, really nice to see the crews greet each other um, after Dra Dragon's arrival. It's worth the wait. <laughs> Absolutely. And as Dragon continues to get closer to the space station ahead of docking, we are hearing that everything is proceeding as expected. Still looking towards an on-time docking at 157 Pacific this afternoon. And you are starting to see some blinking light. Dragon in station, SpaceX on the big loop, expect reconfiguration of the C2V2 link shortly. And you did just hear that call about the C2V2 system being reconfigured. The C2V2 system is the common communications for visiting vehicles, and that really helps to set up uh, the data stream from Dragon to the space station and provides another path for Dragon telemetry to reach Earth. I think that should be renamed C squared, V squared. <laughs> There we have live views from inside Dragon Endurance with the Crew 5 crew. All four astronauts are in their seats, uh, buckled in, and as you can see, their suits are on, but the visors are up. So earlier, the crew uh, donned or put on their suits, and we had four good leak suit checkouts, um, kind of a mouthful to say there, and Basically, in order to execute that, we have the crew put their suits on, put the visors down, lock it into place, and then we um, they get in their seats, they hook up the umbilical, uh, just like they did whenever they ingressed into the capsule prior to launch. And then we pressurize the suits uh, at a certain determined pressure for a certain amount of time, and then we basically just check to make sure that those suits are holding that pressure. Um, and then that's, that's the leak check. Uh, so once that's good, uh, we're able to continue on uh, with the approach uh, timeline, which, uh, you know, gosh, I think it might have been about an hour ago. Feels that much, feels, feels that way. I don't know, time's kind of distorted <laughs> over the last uh, 40 hours, it feels like. Um, but yeah, so with the crew in their seats, um, they are buckled in. It's a five point safety harness uh, that it, it acts basically as a uh, pretty advanced seatbelt. Um, and the crew, of, of course, is basically plugged into their seats. Uh, we had a view just a moment ago um, using the umbilical and that of course provides um, communication telemetry um, uh, of the of the crew themselves uh, and uh, also fresh air uh, so while they're sitting there uh, in their seats they we are pumping um, a nitrogen oxygen mixture through the suit um, as I, as I mentioned before, we are an active operations building here, so uh, you'll have to excuse the, the background noise behind us. Um, but yeah, the, the, the crew is, is very comfortable in their suits. We are flowing some of that fresh air of that nitrox uh, mixture through the suits, uh, nitrox being the, the same stuff that you breathe whenever you're scuba diving. As we await confirmation,
section of Waypoint 1. The International Space Station is flying 264 statute miles over Washington State. In fact, just a few moments ago, it flew over the city of Seattle. So if any of you were outside, you might have caught a glimpse of it flying overhead. But it looks like it's already passing into Canada, and that just really goes to show how fast 17,500 miles per hour is. You cover a lot of ground when you're going that quick. For sure. It's, it's, uh, that, that exact point is kind of what makes it easy to spot, especially at night. Um, it, it just, you know, looking up at the night sky, um, I myself have an app that alerts me whenever <laughs> there's going to be an ISS pass overhead, uh, but I've actually accidentally seen it sometimes too, and um, you look at it and it's this constant bright light, and a lot of people think, oh, it's an airplane, but if you really watch it, it's going way faster than an airplane is. <laughs> And if you are interested to see when the International Space Station is flying over where you live, you can go to the website Spot the Station on NASA's website and you can put in your address, your location, and see when it's going to be flying overhead. Like Kate mentioned, it is a pretty cool thing to see. Yeah, it is pretty neat. Um, actually, uh, this is a good representation of how we're able to see the station uh, while we are on planet Earth. So you can see the space station there has lots of solar panels, um, and it's pretty bright when the sun is shining on it. So at nighttime, when the space station is orbiting Earth, um, those solar panels in the station itself will reflect the sun's light back down at us. And that's what makes it um, so easy to spot. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is that there's no blinking, so um, that's a good different differentiator between an airplane and the station. Uh, the space station, you won't see any blinking coming from the station. And we are now under 250 meters away from the space station. And you are getting a view of Mission Control in Hawthorne, which is just behind us here. This is the room where all of the um, SpaceX flight controllers, uh, responsible engineers, uh, and the core, the crew operations and resources engineer, uh, is positioned, or excuse me, is seated um, as they are basically constantly monitoring Dragon. Um, we have someone on console 24-7 while there is a Dragon on station uh, or in orbit, um, and this is one of the rooms that we do that in. And similarly, in the International Space Station Flight Control. Dragon, SpaceX on the big loop. We see endurance two minutes out from waypoint one. Soft capture ring extension will begin shortly, and Dragon will continue approach to waypoint two. Dragon, copy. And those words there as we continue to make our way to waypoint one, now 237 meters away from the International Space Station. As we've mentioned before, uh, these checkpoints, uh, these imaginary zones that we keep talking about are very important for Dragon or really any spacecraft that's uh, heading to or departing from the space station uh, have to abide by it uh, because everything is um, you know, everything is designed to keep the crews both inside the spacecraft as well as the crew on station safe. Um, there are many checkpoints just to make sure that all systems are func functioning properly and as expected uh, with the spacecraft prior to allowing it to get um, any closer to, to the station. And we are hearing that we're just about a minute out from reaching waypoint one. Dragon 231 meters away from space station. So we are coming up on waypoint one, which is 220 meters right in front of the space station. And that milestone will put us right in line with the docking access. So once Dragon reaches that dock docking access, it will have about 20 hours of power, so it could easily hold there for quite some time and could reattempt to, to dock if necessary, but everything is really proceeding on track for docking today.
and we did just hear confirmation that we are at waypoint one. The next milestone will be waypoint two, and that's coming up in just under eight minutes. Um, as we mentioned before, everything is um, a series of checks and um, uh, phases uh, or really of approach. Uh, in this next phase, uh, we're gonna be heading to waypoint two. Um, and at that point in time, Dragon will f um, basically be uh, you know, in line with the dock that it is heading to. Of course, it's using the... Station, Houston on the big loop. Houston with you on the big loop. Please monitor approach for step three of 1.102 Dragon Approach and Retreat Monitoring. Let us know when your review is complete and you are ready for docking. And uh, Houston, procedure review is complete. Station crew is ready for docking. Houston, copy. And we were just getting an incredible view there of both Dragon and the Moon with Earth in the background. Pretty spectacular. And also, uh, to station see. has uh, Dragon video. Copy that. And there you can see that view again. The moon in the farthest portion of your screen there, the furthest back circle, Dragon in the middle, and the International Space Station in the closest field of view, of course, with our pale blue dot underneath. Again, the station and crew dragon are traveling at 17,000 miles per hour, excuse me, 17,500 miles per hour uh, around planet Earth. So while it looks like <laughs> Earth is rotating slowly, uh, it's actually going pretty quick. Um, the station is roughly 250 miles above Earth. Um, you can think of that as the distance from Los Angeles to San Francisco, uh, or perhaps from Kennedy Space Center to Miami, um, depending on which frame of reference um, relates most to you. But yeah, this view with the moon, again, that the moon is on the, is that dot on the left. Crew Dragon is the dot on the right, of course, uh, heading toward the station. So at this point in time, we have completed, uh, we have reached waypoint one. We are heading toward waypoint two, uh, which is expected in about five minutes. Uh, initial contact between Dragon and the International Space Station is expected to occur at about 1.57 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, before reaching waypoint one, mission operators conducted a go-no-go no -go poll to allow Dragon to begin its approach to waypoint two, which is located inside the keep-out sphere, one of those imaginary uh, shapes that we keep talking about, uh, and that is about 20 meters away from the space station. And as mentioned previously, all visiting vehicles take this phase approach to station, stopping at predetermined gates for teams to run quick checks on vehicle performance before approaching the space station. And when it comes to bringing two spacecraft together, slow and steady really wins the race as docking operations require a great deal of precision to make sure we're keeping the spacecraft and the crew safe. Absolutely. At the 20 meter distance from the station's docking adapter, um, Dragon's approach will slow and it will begin to align itself with the adapter to come in for the final approach. Dragon will first make initial soft contact with the adapter's soft capture ring, which will then retract to bring Dragon in for the hard capture sequence. As a further precaution, Dragon's soft capture system includes a set of rotary spring dampeners to lessen the force of the contact between the capsule and the station. So for now, let's check in with NASA's Shaniqua Vereen in Houston for an update on station. Shaniqua? 
Thanks, Sandra. So far this afternoon, the crew on the station awoke around 1 p.m. Central Time from a nap period, understanding they would have a longer day being in Greenwich Mean Time, and they continued preparations from crew fives of, for Crew Five's arrival. That included setting up casas or temporary living quarters for the additional crew members and special software in the station's cupola to track Dragon's approach and docking. Link reconfiguration and soft capture ring extension complete. Dragon is configured for docking. I can copy. And you just heard from the core in SpaceX Mission Control. That was Jake Vindel reporting to Nicole Mann, commander of Dragon, that they are configured for docking. Back on the International Space Station, we have NASA's Chell Lindgren being prime for monitoring and making sure Dragon, Endur Dragon Endurance stays in the expected zones. Once Dragon is docked, it will join four parked spacecraft at the International Space Station, including SpaceX Dragon Freedom, which brought up the crew four astronauts back in April. Russia's Soyuz MS-22 cruise ship and Progress 80 and 81 resupply ships. Again, after docked, Lindgren will also be primed to start hatch opening operations. Dragon, SpaceX on the big loop, Houston and Hawthorne have pulled go for docking. Confirm visors down and that you are ready for approach two. Next crew five, all visors are down. We are ready for approach two. Copy crew five. Visors down, we're gonna enable the approach shortly. As a reminder, once Dragon is inside the crew hands off point, retreat and breakout are not permitted. I can copy. And you just heard another call from the core at MCCX responding to the crew that they are in preparation for docking in just about 13 minutes from now and looking at to arrive at waypoint two in about three minutes and 30 seconds. Again, once docked, NASA astronaut Chell Lindgren will be primed for getting ready for hatch operations. That includes him going to the large hatch on the node two forward, giving him access into the pressurized mating adapter the crew then will have to pressurize the vestibule, between, which is the small space between the hatches on the Dragon and the space station. This was exposed to the vacuum of space prior to docking, so the crew will then need to fill it with air and make sure its pressure is nearly equal to that of the, the atmospheric pressure on Dragon and inside the station. Lingering will use a small valve that the station's hat, on the station's hatch to slowly introduce air into the station's vestibule Flight controllers here in Houston will monitor and verify the pressure readings here to make sure that everything's leak free before we get ready to open up the hatches for the crew. NASA Flight Director Greg Whitney is leading teams here in Mission Control Houston for Dragon's approach and docking today. And it's arriving in just about 12 minutes and 37 seconds. To his right is Capcom Amy Dill, who will be communicating with the crew aboard station. Right now, there are currently seven astronauts on the station, seven astronauts and cosmonauts living and working on the International Space Station, including NASA's Chell Lindgren, Bob Hines, Jessica Watkins, Frank Rubio, and the current station commander and European Space Agency astronaut, Samantha Christopher Reddy, and Roscosmos cosmonaut, Sergei Prokopiev, and Dmitry Patelin. Crew 5 bringing the crew complement to 11. Again, we're excited to get our Crew 5 astronauts aboard. That's the latest from here in Mission Control Houston. Back over to you, Hawthorne.
Eight Shaniqua. Uh, now at this point in time, uh, Waypoint 2 is up next, and that will put Dragon only 20 meters away from the space station. Uh, from there, the spacecraft will focus on aligning its docking system with the interna International Docking Adapter, or as you sometimes hear it referred to as the IDA. And Dragon is now less than 40 meters away from Space Station. In fact, it's now 37 meters and closing away from docking. You're getting a good view right now of the trunk with those solar arrays that we chatted about earlier. Once Dragon does dock, it will be receiving its power from the International Space Station. And you can also see some of those small thruster firings as we continue to close in on docking, just making sure everything is precisely aligned and that Dragon is directly in front of the international docking adapter. We're about 20 seconds away from waypoint two arrival. We are expecting docking to occur just a little bit later than planned, about 10 minutes uh, from now. Dragon 25. And we did just hear confirmation that Dragon has arrived at waypoint two. Once again, we're about 10 minutes away from docking to the International Space Station. We have a great view there on your screen of the forward hatch of Dragon. We can see that docking mechanism, uh, the gray pieces there uh, now exposed and uh, we have a great shot of it now that Dragon is so close to station. Station Houston on the big loop. Dragon is resuming approach and is go for docking. Monitor per steps five and six. In one decimal one zero two, Dragon approach and retreat monitoring. Station copies, welcome. And that's the call we wanted to hear. Dragon is go for docking. Just a few meters away from the space station now, but when we are about at the two meter uh, point, you may hear a call called CHOP, and that stands for the crew hands off period. While everything has been done autonomously today so far, when we do hear that call CHOP, it means that any re-rendezvous would need to be done automatically through Dragon and the crew would not be initiating any of that. We are 16 meters away from the International Space Station. On the left is Crew Dragon Endurance coming in for docking on the top right with its nose cone. Um, deployed is the Crew Dragon Freedom that is currently docked to the International Space Station and is the vehicle that Crew 4 will return home on. Yeah, it's pretty cool to see, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, both <laughs> two dragons really in the same shot. Um, once again, the Crew 5 vehicle there on the left, making its, uh, its docking approach, uh, which we're expecting in under 10 minutes. And then, in, you know, of course, the Crew 4 vehicle there on uh, the previous shot on the right-hand side. As we get closer, we can see more and more of the Dragon vehicle. Uh, for those of you wondering what those four black circles are, um, those are the forward oh Drago, the forward Draco thrusters. SpaceX copies, 10 meters. And 10 meters away from space station now. And if you look at the Dragon capsule, you can actually see the side Draco thrusters thrusting, um, helping to steer uh, Dragon closer to station accurately. And hearing we're just a couple of minutes away from docking should be coming up just momentarily. Dragon now traveling less than one meter per second as it closes in for docking. 
as you've said before, Sandra, slow and steady wins the race here. Less than 10 meters separating Dragon from the space station. Copy, five meters. And that call, five meters separating Dragon from space station. Should be about a minute until we are docked and crew five is home <laughs> for the next few months. Should hear that call for chop here momentarily. Two meters, chop. And there it was. Copy, two meters. Two meters, crew hands off point. Happens about 25 seconds before contact. One meter. One meter. Dragon, SpaceX on the big loop, contact and soft capture complete, attenuation in progress. And contact confirmed. Dragon made contact with the International Space Station at 2.01 p.m. Pacific, just off the west coast of Africa. Now there are still a few steps that Dragon has to complete before it is securely attached to the station. So uh, we are gonna walk through those. Um, we're going to have uh, completion of that SOP capture ring retraction, uh, and then we're going to begin the hard capture sequence. Uh, and then a few minutes after that, um, uh, some time passes um, that we will have completion of that hard docking. Dragon SpaceX, ring retraction in progress. So there is that first thing I mentioned, uh, that ring retraction for soft capture. And that soft capture ring will retract until its sensors indicate that it is time for the hooks to drive and create a hard capture. There are 12 hooks that are going to be driven to form that hard mate, and they take place uh, in a series of six. So the first six will drive, and then the second six will drive. Just like everything about the approach this morning, everything is in sequence. <laughs> Now you might notice the view of Dragon is a little darker than it was before um, as it was coming in. Uh, of course, the station and now Dragon are orbiting Earth and it looks like they are uh, lost the sunlight there. Uh, live view there from SpaceX Mission Control uh, based here in Hawthorne, California. And so if you are just tuning in with us, Crew 5 has safely completed docking to the International Space Station. That docking occurred at 4.01 p.m. just off the west coast of Africa. Their journey began yesterday afternoon when they lifted off at 11 a.m. Central Time from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Three first-time flyers on board Crew 5 and one veteran astronaut from JAXA, the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, Koichi Wakata. And then those three first time flyers are NASA astronaut, Nicole Mann, who is the first ever female commander of a Dragon. And once she floats on board, Space Station will be the first Native American to ever visit the International Space Station, as well as NASA astronaut, Josh Cassida, who's the first time flyer as well. And the other first time flyer is Rose Cosmos, cosmonaut Anya Kiki. 
That's right. Now we have a little over five minutes left until docking is considered complete. Um, as Sandra was just mentioning, the three first time space goers uh, on this mission, I, I would have to imagine that at this point in time, um, they must be like children sitting in a car seat just wanting to get out. <laughs> um, they have spent um, a long time making this journey, um, literally since launch yesterday at noon Eastern time, uh, yeah, noon Eastern time. And, um, you know, they have friends on board station and I bet they're just so excited to get out of their seats, uh, get out of their suits, open up that hatch and ultimately go get to hang out with their friends for a couple months. Absolutely. Dragon, SpaceX on the big loop, ring retraction complete. Docking sequence is holding for MCS reconfiguration. And we did hear confirmation that the soft capture ring retraction is complete. So the next up is that hard capture sequence start. Again, there's 12 hooks that are going to drive in to create that hard dock between Dragon and the space station. We'll first see six of those hooks begin to drive and then the other six and that will uh, have our docking be complete. Now looking forward uh, to the next events, like I mentioned before, um, we uh, docking, we have about now four minutes left uh, until docking is complete. Um, the team, or excuse me, the crew five crew will uh, have the opportunity to doff or take off their suits. Um, and then it's almost 90 minutes until they actually get to open that A-pass hatch uh, and get to go see their friends, uh, and really get to greet uh, the crew four crew and the other members, uh, other astronauts that are on station. So um, as we've mentioned before, everything is a series of checks and check-ins, um, everything is, a, a, a checklist, a, a sequence of events. Um, and so, yeah, they, they're, they're at the station. Station Houston on the big loop. MCS configured. Proceeding with hook driving. So there's that, com there's that confirmation that we will begin to drive that first set of six hooks. Um, and that is uh, basically that, that hard capture process. So hooks are driving. This is the second time in the flight that we have done something with these hooks. Uh, they were also used just a short time after liftoff, uh, after Dragon was inserted into a nominal orbit and they helped um, to allow that nose cone to swing open. So hooks are continuing to drive. First six hooks driving. Live view there inside the Dragon capsule. We can see the crew has their visors down uh, in the locked position. Again, this is to ensure uh, that if, you know, for any unlikely event that Dragon were to lose pressurization, that suit would act as a second capsule, basically. It's, a, 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 it's almost a spacecraft of its own, being able to provide environment and pressure for the crew uh, in an emergency. And the crew does wear that spacesuit during all of the dynamic phases of flight, during launch, of course, docking. But here pretty shortly, they will be able to take off that spacesuit and they'll actually hang them up to um, dry before they begin to pressurize that vestibule and get ready to float through the space station hatch. As we've mentioned before, those suits are unique, uh, especially fitted for each astronaut. So they, uh, they all have their own uh, storage locations uh, that the suit will get stored in uh, and then they'll uh, actually put them back on not right before they come home they'll do another fit check uh, basically um, shortly before they come home so the crew four crew uh, will be doing that soon uh, in preparation for their return back to earth uh, hopefully next week um, but yeah that's basically just to make sure that the spacesuit that they arrived in still fits well um, no like hot spots for movement um, and is you know still good for them to wear home as Sandra mentioned before 
those of us here on Earth, uh, we know what gravity feels like and the body does change with a lack of gravity. So in the microgravity environment that the astronauts uh, live and work in for months at a time, um, your bodily fluids change. So in space, um, your, your bodily fluids basically reach an equilibrium across your body, whereas here on Earth, uh, they're concentrated near our feet, you know, wherever down is. And so, um, yeah, we'll, the, we'll have the crew put those spacesuits back on uh, prior to um, they prior to beginning their um, their journey home, just to make sure that everything still fits well. Uh, now, we should be getting confirmation that docking is complete here um, in the next couple of seconds. So standing by for confirmation of docking complete. And we did hear that the uh, first set of six hooks is driving and has completed that uh, process. So now the next six are driving. And as you said, once we um, have that finished up, we will have docking complete and we will have what we call a hard mate. So that should happen just um, a few moments from now. The second set of hooks is continuing to drive. And if you are just tuning in with us, four astronauts arrived to the International Space Station just minutes ago at uh, 2.01 p.m. Pacific, 5.01 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. And they did complete the soft capture ring retraction, which uh, was the initial step in the docking sequence. And now we are completing the hard capture sequence. We've had the first six hooks drive and we are standing by for confirmation that the last six have driven successfully and all there's 12 hooks that will mate Dragon to the International Space Station. With that live view of Dragon there on your screen, we can see the pilot and commander uh, so from this viewpoint, it would be Commander Nicole Mann on the left-hand side of your screen. Dragon, SpaceX on the big loop, hard capture complete. Moving on to ring retraction and then umbilicals. Dragon copy. All right, and there we just heard that uh, that hard capture is complete. Good news there. Yeah, that's the call that we wanted to hear. All 12 of those hooks have made it to the space station as expected. So again, we do have a hard dock at this moment. Once the crew gets confirmation that docking is complete, they'll then be given the go to doff or take off their spacesuits. Uh, and then begins the couple hours long pro process of uh, opening the various hatches, both on the Dragon side as well as the station side. So even though they have arrived at station and we have a hard dock, co um, confirmed hard dock, um, there's still a couple hours left to go uh, before the crew gets to, um, uh, before the Crew 5 crew uh, gets to embrace their fellow space station crew members. And there will be a couple of different tasks to do um, after we do get those hatches open in Dragon to just uh, get ready for those docked operations. Most of it is focused on the atmospheric control on board Dragon. So they will uh, be removing what's called a LIO canister or a lithium hydroxide canister that is used to help scrub CO2 from the Dragon cabin during free flight. And they'll also rem remove a seal um, that uh, essentially integrates Dragon's cabin with the rest of the space station. Okay. 
And we did hear that the umbilical deploy is underway, as we've mentioned a couple of times. Once those umbilicals get set up and attached, that's how Dragon will get its power from the International Space Station. On the flight uphill, it utilized the solar arrays that are located on the Dragon's trunk. Dragon, SpaceX on the big loop, umbilicals mated, docking sequence complete. Crew Dragon Endurance and Koichi, Nicole, Josh, and Anna, welcome to the International Space Station. Thank you so much. Crew 5 is happy to have finally arrived at the International Space Station. Endurance is a very proper name for our training mission and the spacecraft. To the NASA and the SpaceX teams, a huge thank you. Especially shout out to our training lead, Tyler Carr, for all the uh, simulations you put us through and the training. We were definitely well prepared, and we are looking forward to getting to work. We made it to the International Space Station. It was only through the efforts of so many people. We thank you, and we'll make you proud. Let's go, Expedition 68. Thank you, everybody, yes, for giving us this, this smooth ride, just like in the simulation. And uh, you trained us well, and I uh, really appreciate all the efforts of the SpaceX team, NASA, Roscosmos, JAXA, ESA, and Canada, of all these national partners. And I cannot wait to start working uh, with our crewmates on Next Mission 68. Dragon, this is Station. We're glad to have you aboard. We'll see you here in a minute. And there you just heard some words. And Dragon, on behalf of SpaceX, it's been a pleasure working with all of you. Ground teams will be enabling hardline power and comm connection shortly as we work towards hatch opening. In the meantime, you are go to doff suits per procedure 4.012, and we'll bring the cameras external. Some lovely words there from the Crew 5 crew. Uh, they have just completed docking. Okay, I got a two decimal of zero out one two. Good read, Anna, and great words. Last commentary there from uh, Anna Kikina. Um, I, I, I don't speak Russian, but I think there's a pep in her step. I think she's pretty excited to be there. So all that being said, now that Dragon has completed the docking sequence, the spacecraft must undergo a handful of checks before we're able to open that hatch. Uh, the crew on board Dragon will now get a chance to get out of their suits. Dragon, SpaceX on Dragon to ground, cameras are external. was just uh, SpaceX core, um, uh, just letting the crew know that they're good to... Okay, we copy. Turn on the cameras. Thank you, Logic. Just letting the crew know that they are good to take off their suits. Uh, those onboard cameras have now been turned off for privacy reasons. Uh, so yeah, uh, the crew will get a chance to get out of their suits before moving into hatch operations. That's right, and things will start to be picking up inside the space station, too, as NASA's Chell Lindgren gets the hatch on the station side ready to be opened and starts pressurizing that area known as the vestibule between the Dragon and station hatches. With Dragon docked, that's going to do it for us here in Hawthorne, but our coverage for Crew 5 won't stop here. The coverage will continue with our team positioned in the International Space Station Flight Control Room in Houston. So for Kate and I, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for tuning in. But Shaniqua, what's ahead for Dragon? Oh, you go. 
Thanks, Sandra. And goodbye to my friends at SpaceX. Mission Control Houston will take you through to the hatch open anticipated at 5.42 p.m. Central Time and the welcome ceremony expected at around 7.15 p.m. Central Time. It was a very exciting moment here for us in Mission Control Houston following Dragon's docking. That was a successful docking at 4.01 p.m. Central Time, 5.01 p.m. Eastern Time, while flying 259 statute miles off the coast of west, the west coast of Africa. It's great to see Dragon docked. Energy in the room here is high. There was applause and smiles all around the room upon docking. Now that we are docked, Chell Lindgren is securing some hardware, then moving right into hatch operations. First, he will open the large hatch at the node two forward, giving him access inside the pressurized mating adapter. Then he'll have to pressurize the vestibule, which is the small space between the hatches on Dragon and the space station. This was exposed to vacuum prior to docking, and we need to fill it with air and make sure its pressure is nearly equal to that of the atmospheric pressure on Dragon and the space station. Lindgren will use a small valve on the station's hatch to slowly introduce air into the vestibule. Flight control is here and Mission Control Houston will monitor the pressure and temperature readings inside. And Dragon on, Dragon on ground. Calm check from the cabin mic. Koichi on the cabin mic, we've got you five by five. How us on the speakers? We got you loud and clear on the speakers. Thank you. Station Houston on Space Ground 2 for Chell. And you just heard a call out from Capcom here in Mission Control Houston, Amy Deal sitting right next to the flight director, Greg Whitney, leading the docking and rendezvous portion. We are currently docked to the station and we are waiting for the crew to do some steps to be ready to open the hatch. We just heard a call to NASA's Chell Lindgren and he was given the go to go ahead and begin those uh, hatch operations. First, he will open the large hatch at node two forward, giving him access inside the pressurized mating adapter. Then he'll have to pressurize the vestibule, which is the small space between the hatches on Dragon and the space station. This was exposed to vacuum prior to docking, and we need to fill it with air and make sure its pressure is nearly equal to that of the atmosphere on Dragon and the space station. Linger will sm use a small valve on the station's hatch to slowly introduce air into the vestibule. Flight controllers here in Mission Control Houston will monitor the pressure and temperature readings inside and verify that everything is leak free before we get ready to open up the hatches. Again, we're expecting hatch open to happen at 5.42 p.m. Central Time. Following hatch open, the crew will configure Dragon for on-orbit on ops and get a safety briefing. With critical research and science aboard Dragon today, they will begin to unload the hardware. A few hours from then, we will have a welcome ceremony with all crew members for Crew 4 and Crew 5, as well as the astronauts aboard, astronauts and cosmonauts aboard the space station.
station on the big loop. The no two forward hatch is open. Copy, no two forward hatch open. Go ahead, Sam. The uh, ethos equalization bundle was opened at GMT 2126. Houston, copy. Dragon, SpaceX on the big loop, vestibule pressurization in progress, reference 4.400, for telemetry if you'd like. Copy, I'm in 4.400. Houston Station on two on the big loop. APAS valve is closed at 2127. And the no two camera is on if you'd like to route it. Houston copies all. And you just heard some calls from the crew to the from the crew on board station and inside of Dragon, basically all confirming that we've had start of hatch operations and pressurization of that vestibule. Dragon SpaceX on Dragon to ground for a few vehicle configuration items.
for Dragon. Hey, Nicole, uh, first item, ISS power connection has been established. Uh, everything's looking nominal there. Second item has to do with the waste system. Report ready to copy. Copy, we have good power and ready to copy for the waste system. All right, we are looking for your help characterizing the some power draw we saw on the waste fan while it was being used prior to suit dawn on approach. So we're going to add an addendum to procedure 4.400, step 5.1. The action as it stands now is to work through your cabin configuration for that whole procedure and, and just call down when you reach section 5. Uh, we've got an addendum in 5.1. Ready to copy in 5.1. Uh, understand you're ready to copy. I think this is going to go smoother if we just wait till you're actually there. Um, and so I'd, I'd recommend you all continue with suit doffing and then uh, give me a call when you're at section 5. Gotcha, no problem. We'll call you when we get into Section 5. Sounds good. Thanks, Nicole. And you just heard calls from the core at SpaceX and Mission Control, Jake Vendel. He's calling to Commander of Dragon, Nicole Mann. Dragon will be also doing some operations on their side, preparing Dragon for a long duration stay. They are looking at a six month science mission while aboard the International Space Station. And you're currently seeing live views of Dragon Dock to the International Space Station. Dragon in the International Space Station and almost a sun in the orbital daytime. 268 statute miles above the Indian Ocean.
You're currently looking inside the International Space Station. We had views of uh, Commander Samantha Christopheretti and NASA astronaut Chell Lindgren just a few seconds ago as they were floating by, still making those final preparations for hatch open for the Crew 5's arrival inside the International Space Station. Again, we're looking for that hatch open to happen around 5.42 p.m. Central Time. If you're currently just tuning in, you're watching live coverage of NASA's SpaceX Crew-5 mission to the International Space Station, where they had a successful dock to the complex at 5.01 p.m. Eastern Time. NASA astronauts Nicole Mann and Josh Cassida, JAXA astronaut Koichi Wakata, and Ross Cosmos com cosmonaut Anna Kikina arrived to the International Space Station just about 39 minutes ago. Following Dragon's link up to the Harmony module, the crew aboard Dragon Endurance and the space station will be conducting some standard leak checks and they have begun pressurization of the vestibule between the spacecraft in preparation for the hatch opening currently scheduled for 5.42 p.m. Central Time, 6.42 p.m. Eastern Time. Upon hatch opening, Man, Kasada, Kasada, Okada, and Kikana will join the Expedition 68 crew of NASA astronauts Bob Hines, Chell Lindgren, Frank Rubio, and Jessica Watkins, Samantha Christopheretti of ESA, and Roscosmos cosmonauts Sergei Prokopiev and Dmitry Patelin. For a short period of time, the number of the crew on the space station will increase to 11 people until Crew 4 departs. You currently see a dock dragon to the f to the forward node two hatch, and on your left, and then to the right of your screen, you're seeing inside the International Space Station, where the crew is eagerly preparing for the ingress of the crew.
and Dragon Houston on the big loop. Stand by for hardline audio config. Now looking at views as NASA astronaut Chell Lindgren is entering the area of the hatch as he continues preparations for the Crew-5 crew to ingress from Crew Dragon Endurance.
Dragon, Houston on the big loop for Hardline Audio Voice Check. Houston, the Dragon, we have you loud and clear. I hear you loud and clear as well. Please call SpaceX for Hardline Voice Check. SpaceX Dragon for a hardline com check. And Nicole, we've got you loud and clear as well. We have you the same. And you just heard the Crew Commander Nicole Mann on the big loop doing comm checks between her and Dragon to Mission Control Houston as well as MCCX Mission Control for SpaceX out in Hawthorne, California. SpaceX Dragon on the big loop for suits. Dragon, we're with you on suits. Okay, 
just letting you know section four is complete and in section five all suits are drying. We have started a timer. And do we still have drag in the ground with you or is this our only compact? And Dragon SpaceX on the big loop, we do have Dragon to ground, and I think we should head over there. We're just going to have a lot of uh, probably bothersome calls for the whole ISS crew. I tried you a couple times on a Dragon to ground before this with a new response, but I will switch over and try you again on Dragon to ground. Copy. Currently seeing a live view of Dragon Endurance docked to the fort port of the Harmony module. On the big loop uh, for COM, just providing some awareness. I think we've got spotty Tedris coverage and have for some time. We can stick on the big loop uh, for the continued coordination here. Uh, you are go for 4.400 uh, for cabin configuration. We'll go for 4.400, and you copy that the suits are drying. Copy that the suits are drying. Station Houston on the big loop for Chell. And I'm with you on the big loop. Okay, the lead check has passed. You are go for ingress part two in step three decimal one. Three decimal one, ingress. And uh, let's put that work now, thanks. Houston copy. And you just heard Capcom Amy Dill to Chell Lindgren, NASA astronaut primed for hatch operations inside the International Space Station. He was given a go to safing and applying the ISS power to Dragon.
station, Houston on the big loop for Chell. Hey, Wadi, uh, for the hatch opening, uh, you can continue to execute in step three decimal three. We go in three decimal three. Dragon on the big loop for toilet. Hey, Nicole, I'm with you on the big loop. Hey, Jake, I know you have some deltas when we secure the waste system, but in the meantime, is the waste system operational? What a question. Stand by one. Dragon, SpaceX on the big loop, uh, report ready to copy. I think we should just have you step into the troubleshooting we have planned for later. Hey Jake, I happen to be up here, so I'm ready to execute your troubleshooting if you want. Okay, Josh, uh, we are going to have you turn on the waste fan and then head down to location 22, open the access panel, and check for flow through the mesh, then report back. How copy? Okay, copy. We're going to turn on the waste fan and then go down to 22 and see if we've got flow through the mesh. Good copy. And that was the core in MCCX, SpaceX's Mission Control in Hawthorne, California, confirming with the crew, Josh Cassida, as they continue to proceed through steps, making Dragon ready for its long duration stay, eventually being configured for a quiescent mode, and that will remain there for six months. There will be periodic checks throughout Dragon's stay to check on the spacecraft's health before departing six months down the road. We've got uh, bad news or good news, depending on how you look at it. We do feel flow down in uh, location 22, and we're guessing you want us to go grab the cat from the other demo. Dragon, that's a good read. You're ahead of us. We do want you to go install the cap, and we're going to plan to leave it installed through the dock duration. How copy? Copy that. We'll, uh, we'll install it with the cotter pins and leave it through the dock duration. Thanks.
currently seeing dual boxes, the Dragon Endurance attached to the space station on your left, and that's astronaut Chell Lingren inside the International Space Station as he continues preparations for the Crew 5's ingress into the space station. Again, we're looking for ingress to be about 35 minutes from now. Looking at 5.42 p.m. Central Time, 6.42 p.m. Eastern. Sensation on two on the big loop. The gas detector is reading zero after five minutes. Houston copies. Dragon, SpaceX on the big loop for waste system. Go ahead, Jake. Hey, Josh, we've got a few thoughts here, um, working through it with the back room. We're wondering uh, if you've installed the cap already, and if you have not, we're wondering if you could uh, run a quick test to sort of characterize the flow through the funnel, stand by one. Okay, following up, uh, we are gonna have you install the cap and then you are uh, clear to use the waste system as normal. Okay, sounds good. The cap is installed and we did verify that we've got good flow at the funnel now. Thanks. Okay, we copy uh, good flow at the funnel and, and again, you are good to use the system as normal. We copy that, Jake. Thanks.
station, Houston on the bid loop. For station on the bid loop. All right, you have a go to perform step three decimal six, and we'll take that gas detector reading from inside the vestibule. Copy, go on three decimal six, and we'll give you a gas detector reading from inside the vestibule. Houston copies. And that was flight director, that was Capcom, Amy Dill, to the crew on the big loop telling them that they could take some readings for the, the vestibule, still in those operations, preparing for the hatch opening, still scheduled now for 5.42 p.m. Central Time, 6.42 p.m. Eastern Time. If you're just joining us, we had a successful docking of the Crew 5 crew to the International Space Station at 4.01 p.m. Central, 5.01 p.m. Eastern Time, while the Dragon and the International Space Station were flying 259 statute miles off the west coast of Africa. We're currently in a brief handover period between satellites and should have those views of the International Space Station and Dragon back for you shortly. And they're back. You currently see the APAS hatch open. That was Jessica Watkins floating through. And we now see NASA astronaut Chell Lindgren going over to continue that the hatch operations to ready for the ingress of Crew-5. Just moments ago, they were given a go by Mission Control Houston to do readings of the vestibule making sure that it was right pressure and the right um, mix inside the vestibule before opening the hatch of Dragon. Houston Station on the big loop. Have gas detector readings of zero in the vestibule. We copy readings of zero in the vestibule. And you just heard confirmation that there's a zero reading inside the vestibule and that's zero gas being read from the vestibule.
condensation station on the big loop. Four decimal one. No condensation in the IDA vestibule. Use to copy. And we currently see it is all hands on deck as crew four, Samantha Crisferetti, current station commander, and Bob Hines in your forefront view in the center of the screen. And off to the right, we see NASA astronaut Jessica Watkins. Oh, sorry, that is Frank Rubio. and they contain preparations for the ingress of Crew-5 from Dragon Endurance.
Houston, SpaceX, station on the break loop. Station is ready for Dragon Hatch equalization. Houston, copy. SpaceX copies. You just heard a call from the crew to Mission Control Houston as well as Mission Control at SpaceX that the crew is ready for hatch equalization. And you're currently seeing views from a camera inside the vestibule. Uh, they have a, ha the astronauts aboard the ISS have put a camera facing them to be able to watch as the crew ingresses from Endurance Dragon.
You're currently seeing all of crew four plus Frank Rubio out still preparing for that hatch open. We're looking. Dragon to ground. Come check. Hey, Koichi, I've got you five by five on dragon to ground. Jake, uh, if you're ready, we can give you the uh, water and uh, food inventory uh, tracker re uh, reporting. We are ready to copy. Okay, uh, for uh, water inventory, from uh, bag 203, we consumed all five bottles. And from bag 204, we consumed all five bottles. And uh, from uh, bag 207, two bottles uh, consumed. And from, uh, from bag 208, all five bottles were consumed. And that's the end of the water inventory. Copy on water, 203, five bottles. 204, five bottles, 207, two bottles, and 208, five bottles. And I've got one more question for you. We do bookmark one of those for the waste system flush. I wonder if you have already taken that into account. Yes, we have taken that uh, bottle uh, into account for the uh, water flush. Perfect, and we're with you for food. Okay, for food, from a bag 301, breakfast and uh, lunch consumed, from uh, bag 302, snack and dinner were consumed, those are fully consumed, and from uh, bag 309, uh, three quarters of uh, breakfast and three quarters of lunch were consumed. And uh, from uh, back 310, snack is fully consumed and uh, half dinner is consumed. That's the end of the, uh, the food inventory. We copy. 301, two meals consumed. 302, both items consumed. 309 Station had three, three quarters three of a breakfast a and a lunch. Answer. 310 had snack consumed okay. and half a dinner. And I've got one okay, hanging question for you. For Is from the, the dragon crew plan to dispose of all the half eaten and three quarter the eaten loop, items? Be about five minutes for equalization. To the go from uh, the Dragon Crew and uh, then Yeah, Jake, uh, that's affirmative. We will consume those uh, uh, partially consumed ones. Okay. We will trash we those uh, uh, partially cons consumed uh, food in the on the ISS. Okay, we copy all. Thanks, Kuichi. Thank you, Jake. You just heard on Dragon to Ground Loop, the crew, five crew inside of Dragon Endurance give a reading on the consumables that they used while in flight in approach and docking to the International Space Station. We are just awaiting them, the crew, five crew, to give an okay um, for... Dragon, SpaceX on Dragon to Ground for working towards hatch opening. Hey Koichi, understand uh, you're not quite through 4.400, 
we're, we've got some itchy folks here on the ground uh, looking to equalize across the hatch. Uh, we're looking to perform the first few steps of Section 6, equalize across the Dragon Hatch, while you continue with Section 5 for the waste system flush. Uh, how copy? Okay, uh, we copy. And you just heard the core Jake Vindel in SpaceX Mission Control in Hawthorne, California, talk to Koichi Wakata aboard Dragon Endurance. He relayed that the ISS crew on board station is ready for uh, equalization and that they could continue procedures on their side as the ISS crew begins the equalization of Dragon. We are looking for about a five minute timer on that. After that period, teams will verify that the hatch is good to open between the space station and Endurance. Jake on uh, Dragon the Ground, I am uh, with you here in Section 6, and Bosch is working Section 5. Copy, Nicole, and uh, just to confirm, we want to make sure the Dragon crew is ready to equalize across the hatch. A firm Dragon crew ready to equalize across the hatch. Okay, copy. We will send that command shortly. And again, you just heard Jake Vindel report to the crew that they are ready for hatch equalization. So that's ISS crew and the crew inside Dragon Endurance are ready to equalize the hatch. Again, the clock will start about a five minute timer. After that period, teams will verify that the hatch is good to open between the space station and Endurance. Station and Dragon, Houston on the big loop. Stand by for equalization, which is expected to take five minutes. Dragon copies. Station copies, five minutes. And you just heard it, five minutes for equalization. Once that process has begun, and that was Jessica Watkins on board the International Space Station and Nicole Mann inside Endurance confirming that they heard the go for equalization. Would you, Sam? Yeah, I know we've got some critical events going on, but uh, we also have some time critical uh, activities after hatch opening. I just wanted to mention right now we're not able to um, refresh Optimus or access the Ops products uh, anywhere on IPET or SSC. Okay, we copy, Sam. We'll discuss down here. And uh, Houston has a follow up. It seems like one of the laptops now finally uh, was able to open Optimus. Uh, so it might have been just a very slow uh, situation for a moment. Uh, we'll keep uh, looking at it. Okay, we copy. Thanks for the report.
SpaceX Dragon on Dragon to ground for configuration. Nicole, we're with you on Dragon to ground. We're complete with section five. Uh, we're standing by here in section six. We've got the suits drying. I've got seven more minutes on the timer. Uh, big picture, are you thinking that we're gonna open the forward hatch and then go in for a quick hello and then come back to finish up with the suits and then step into the ISS procedure? Dragon, uh, that's a good read. We are going to step into the hatch open process right now and then have you come on back uh, for some final cabin configuration steps. Okay, copy. So we're going to, um, on your go, we will get that hatch open and then um, I'll just with you before we enter ISS and say hello. Then we'll come back and finish up with our suits and then we'll also execute 2.102. Copy all, and that's a good read. Stand by one. And we have confirmation inside Mission Control that Crew Dragon is equalized to the International Space Station. And the crew inside Dragon and the ISS are ready for hatch open. Dragon SpaceX on the big loop, you are go for Dragon Hatch opening for the decal, followed by the remaining actions in 4.400 Section 6. Dragon copies, we're opening the forward hatch and finishing up Section 6. And you just heard confirmation to the crew that they are go for hatch opening. And you can see smiling and waving the forward hatch on the Crew Dragon Endurance has been opened. The crew inside, the crew inside International Space Station are all smiles and waves as they see the beginning of ingress from the Crew 5 crew from Dragon Endurance. And that was a confirmed hatch open at 5.49 p.m. Central Time, 6.49 p.m. Eastern Time.
That hatch we've been waiting for is now open since docking at 4.01 p.m. Central Time, 5.01 p.m. Eastern Time. Hatch opening taking place at 5.49 p.m. Central, 6.49 p.m. Eastern Time. All smiles on, s on the International Space Station as they eagerly await the ingress of Crew 5. The hatch is open, but Crew 5 astronauts will need to work through a few more steps and gather some imagery as well. At the time of hatch open, Dragon and the International Space Station were flying 263 statute miles above the South Atlantic Ocean. It may be just a couple more minutes before Crew 5 astronauts ingress the space station to be welcomed onto their new home for the next six months as a part of Expedition 68 as they walk through a few more procedures. The crew inside of Dragon Endurance are installing some IMV ducting, mixing the air of the space station environment with the air inside of Crew Dragon Endurance. They'll seal some of the LIO or lithium hydroxide cartridges that scrubbed carbon dioxide inside of Dragon Capsule on the ride to the International Space Station. And they'll check some vent valves as well. So maybe just a little bit more time until we welcome them on board the International Space Station. And here we come through. First one through the hatch is going to be Nicole Mann, commander of Dragon, and now the first Native American woman to live and stay aboard the International Space Station. All hugs and smiles going around. Next one through the hatch is Josh Cassida, the pilot of Dragon. He's getting his welcome and hellos from the crew aboard International Space Station. And we see right now, right past Nicole Mann's hair, is Koichi Wakata of JAXA coming through the hatch. And last but not least, Anna Kikina of Roscosmos just entered the International Space Station and Crew 5 is officially ingressed from Dragon Endurance into their home for the next six months, the International Space Station. And with the addition of Crew 5 on board, there is currently 11 astronauts inside the International Space Station.
We're currently in a brief handover between satellites and should have the acquisition of signal back shortly. Bring you more views inside the International Space Station. And just moments ago, we saw Crew 5 ingress the station. And now we have the 11 person crew of Expedition 67 now all together in Node 2 of the International Space Station. Typically, we'd have a welcoming ceremony shortly after ingress of the crew. However, today, the crew will be unloading critical science and investigations, as well as finishing up some of those procedures to make Dragon ready for their six-month stay docked to the International Space Station. We are expe expecting a welcoming ceremony around 7.15 p.m. Central Time. We'll have a brief intermission between the ingress of the crew as they unload that critical science and hardware from Dragon Endurance into the International Space Station. Again, we're expecting a welcome event for the crew around 7.15 p.m. Central Time. 8.15 p.m. Eastern Time. And that was an incredible day and a 25, 29 hour rendezvous for the Crew 5 crew after launching successfully yesterday from the launch complex at Kennedy Space Center, launch complex 39A at 11 a.m. Central Time, 12 Eastern. The crew docked at 4.01 p.m. Central Time 5.01 p.m. Eastern Time. And just moments ago, at 5.49 p.m. Central Time, the, the hatch from Dragon Endurance was opened, and we just saw Crew 5 welcomed aboard the International Space Station. The population of the space station now at 11 human beings as a part of Expedition 68. It's been an incredible 24 hours for Crew 5. And from all of us here in Houston, welcome aboard Crew 5. That's our coverage for now. But do join us for the Crew 5 welcoming event and remarks at 7.15 p.m. Central Time. This is Mission Control Houston.